uh, when I joined Google, as, as Thao just said, we, um, I got involved in this, uh, in sort of managing the relationship uh, with Stanford and decided over time to sort of bring this to Google, you know, because I, I think I, I started to understand it made some sense for Google to do this. So we, we built this Clue G car research vehicle here with lasers, with cameras on it, you know, you know with GPS, with various batteries and computers and radar arrays. It was just a, a big kludge of, of, uh, of uh, you know, systems. Um, and, uh, you know, over time, we started getting better at it. We built a better mousetrap. So this is like the, uh, the next generation. Here um, is generation. And by the way, when we built this, we had not launched any imagery yet. It was just building the systems, the software system, the hardware systems to let us do this. Uh, it was still kind of a, a very early stage. Uh, for this particular vehicle, we had decided that um, for this project to be viable, we needed to have, you know, every possible system in one vehicle in order to minimize operation cost, which turned out to be a big mistake because that thing was way too complicated to operate and we could never build more than a few and they would always break down. So we just changed our mind soon after that. Um, this being said, you know, with imagery captured from this, we're able to launch in 2007 uh, what's known as Street View now. Uh, first in five cities, so really not much imagery, uh, only five city cores to be, to be honest. And, um, and you know, we, didn't want to launch just in Bay Area because we wanted to show from day one that we had ambitions to grow, you know, to grow this to be a kind of a global scale. And so having at least some smattering of cities, East Coast, West Coast, South, North, was, you know, our, our way of demonstrating this. Um, and, uh, you know, Google is sort of all about scale. You launch something, you observe, you know, traffic, you try to understand if you bring value to your users, and then you try to grow this to bring value to more users. So after this launch was a success, we, uh, sort of focused on, on, on sort of uh, two things. First, the image quality aspect, because oddly enough, the image quality when we launched was very, very poor. You can see an example here of what I mean. Um, these are images captured from this uh, big, uh, you know, sort of vehicle I showed earlier, which had the uh, camera timing issues. You're trying to capture images in all eight directions around a rosette, but the timing was such that, you know, some cameras were triggered the wrong, you know, at different times. And so as you drive here on the Golden Gate Bridge, you take pictures of the same pedestrians multiple times from like one panorama. When you stitch together, you make twins, uh, like, like we did right here. Or you create, you know, shrunk models of Porsche, <laughs> like, like here. So we had a whole bunch of, you know, image quality issues, which we worked on, but we felt that early on, the image quality was not actually the main driver. People were just interested, just like in Google Earth, they loved to first see their house from, Google Earth, you know, here they love to just, you know, fly around in a neighborhood, you know, go and check their house and their neighbor's house and their friend's house and look around and find fun stuff in the imagery. And the, the fact that there were artifacts like this was not an issue. In fact, it was more like fun. People found it interesting and started to create websites, you know, listing all these funny artifacts we had. Uh, but we're able to still, you know, at some point, you know, build a reliable platform, build reliable software systems and sort of start to get a handle on this. So we started to scale and we build here's a generation of our cars um, with our own camera rig, uh, this time called the R5. Um, and uh, we built a bunch of them uh, in the US and scaled to Europe and Asia. And, uh, you know, at some point we had like, you know, hundreds of these cars driving around. And uh, we were able to go from, you know, this uh, few cities in the US to more cities to now things start to blend together. We have to change our interface to try to uh, represent the fact we had imagery sort of, you know, everywhere. And uh, where we're today is, you know, 70, you know, uh, 70 countries, uh, over 7 million miles or 10 million kilometers covered. And in fact, we even have added recently what we call the time machine dimension. So we can let you go back in time in some areas that we've driven multiple times. So if you add those in, we probably have even doubled this mileage. So we have a lot of data. And uh, we find that for this project, we actually need a lot of data because the usage is very, very what we call long tail. Users care about the area around them mostly. Right, there's a certain amount of usage, actually a lot of usage, that is about um, sort of virtual travel. So people, you know, go to Street View and other products that we offer in order to dream about destinations to go to. And I'll get to more of this in a minute. But you know, the vast majority of the traffic is actually fairly local. It's people looking for a restaurant around, you know, near their house, looking for their bike ride to work, taking out the turns, you know, looking for, you know, uh, how to get their next appointment and what the house looks like. Uh, so all these usage are very, you know, sort of local around you. Uh, but as I said, we also have, you know, we care very much about the usage that, uh, you know, the use case where we let people dream about places. And so we've, from day one, very much been interested in uh, capturing amazing places, uh, like World Heritage, excuse me, World Heritage sites. 
And uh, we built this rig. So again, early days. Uh, was you know very scrappy, low budget, and we just essentially managed to re uh, you know reassemble the car on a tricycle. So this is the same equipment, except it's got a small generator in the back in this uh, in this kind of you know housing here, uh, and uh, this lets you capture imagery pretty much like a car does. Even has the lasers to capture three D data, and we've taken this rig you know to lots and lots of places. In fact, this was driven by Rebecca Steamer herself. Uh, it was a trip down the Amazon where we managed to put the this what we call the trike on a boat to capture imagery of, uh, you know, of the Amazon River, and then, in fact, take that rig and uh, you know, sort of take it in some villages to capture imagery on the ground. So it was a dual-use, uh, amphibian-type you know, use of, the, of the, you know, the system, which we liked a lot. We've taken this also underwater. We work with a, you know, a bunch of partners around the world to capture imagery. And one called the Caitlin Seaview Survey has built this rig of three you know, very wide fish eyes and some sort of mini submarine that pulls a, uh, a diver, and uh, they use our platform to publish the imagery. They have captured a number of you know coral reefs around the world. They are trying to document reef you know uh, health and history um, around the world. And we've also built this thing. This is actually me testing it out uh, at Squaw Valley, but. Uh, it's like the next frontier. It's how we can really go truly everywhere, well, except underwater. Uh, we, uh, we can take this rig and walk around. And more and more now, we, uh, we in fact, work with partners around the world, partners who care about a particular place, a particular park, a particular unique site, that know that place inside out. What these guys do, they can borrow this record for us, from, from us for free. We let them borrow it for as long as they need it. They go and capture the place, and we help them publish it, you know, document it. And so it's really a win-win. Uh, these people get to sort of tell the story of their park, of, their, of the place they care about. We get the imagery to help our users, and then more users get so help finding places to, uh, to go and discover and, and, and dream about. So uh, we really like this, uh, this model. Recently, you may have seen, we, we just launched last week, or was it this week? Anyway, uh, we launched amazing imagery, what we call the first vertical street view, really, of, uh, of Yosemite. It's El Capitan here, a very famous climber, Lynn Hill, who participated in this, uh, in this expedition. So uh, it's 3D, really, there's like no limit. We can really pretty much take this kind of technology and various species of it and uh, take it up mountains, even. Um, so where are we now? So this was just our humble beginning. We have seen, you know, since 2007, Grown to do many, many more things. And you know, the way I like to describe the mission of, of the geoimagery team at Google, it's really about sort of capturing imagery or crawling the world for imagery uh, you know, in, you know, using different modalities. So we capture it from the ground with street view with people. We capture it from flying you know, vehicles, airplanes, in fact, multiple types of airplanes. We even have satellites. I'll talk about this in just a minute. Uh, that's a skybox uh, angle of this. And then we also have the you know the crawling aspect where we we uh, we get people to you know submit pictures or we, we sort of try to organize you know pictures that already exist either captured by people or that are on websites or that may be on government tapes you know and uh, that's uh, what uh, you know we brought into earth engine or the landsat data you know which before we got involved really was uh, just you know collecting dust on some uh, government you know shelves so uh, we take all this data, we organize it, we, uh, we try to derive knowledge from it, uh, meaning we, uh, we more and more run sophisticated algorithms to derive 3D where appropriate, to derive sort of knowledge about the images, to understand where they are taken. And then we sort of make all this data available, useful, accessible, right? And so we, we uh, make it available in our own products, in Google Maps, in Google Earth, in other, uh, other parts of Google, but also to help our own data efforts. You know, our products are you know, have good quality maps because we can derive the data from the images it's themselves. So more and more the images are used either by sort of people or by algorithm to derive map data and to improve the map, right? And beyond this, obviously, that's what you all hear, or so many of you, in fact, um, thank you. Uh, it's uh, because we also can use this data to sort of uh, help make this world a better place. So, uh, you know, this data, you know, together, with our algorithms and other systems that you are building can help us with you know, forest monitoring, with water mapping, and uh, with you know, humanitarian uh, um, you know, situations. So uh, the latest you know, entrant to the family is Skybox. So let me say a few, a few words about Skybox before I turn it over to Alan Bellward. Uh, Skybox was acquired by Google uh, about a year ago. Um, and the Skybox you know, angle on satellites is to go from from this, which is a typical size, you know, satellite, imaging satellite nowadays. This is, I think, I'm not sure which one that is, but it's the size of kind of a, a bus, more or less. It's very large and very expensive. 
And what uh, the Skybox team has managed to do, really, is to create a uh, high-quality imaging platform uh, in the size of what we call a dorm room fridge. So you know, about yay big, you know, one to 200 pound type thing. Uh, still able to get you on the order of uh, 90 centimeter resolution uh, and, and improving over time. So uh, actually the slide says 70. We're not quite there yet, I think, but we will be. Um, and so we have uh, two of these birds flying right now. Uh, and of course, we are trying to get more in the air. And um, these uh, satellites can get you some amazing quality, actually. So uh, these are Skybox uh, imagery satellites from about a year ago. Here's Golden Gate. You know, so you can capture amazing sites. Uh, Statue of Liberty, this is Sydney. And uh, you, know, you can do a bunch of things with them. The interesting aspect of these satellites is because we will have a bunch of them uh, and they are very nimble, we can actually use them to revisit places often. So we can really monitor change you know, in places that matter. And this is what we want to do really with this, uh, with these uh, satellites. So some examples of application could be monitoring crop health, you know, sort of agriculture, observing daily change. You know, this is what's happening at Burning Man over a few days uh, after registration. You can see the, the whole site being built. It's pretty amazing. Over a few days, it changes completely. Um, you can do things like observe sort of economic activity to better understand how the world ticks. So this is, you know, what ha what's happening in, I think, what is it, San Diego or I forgot. But anyway, so uh, you can see ships arriving, cars, you know, containers, you know, loaders, all this stuff. And you can maybe better understand how the world works. Um, and of course, yeah, I think there's key applications around humanitarian crises and, and others. These are images of a refugee camp in, in Sudan that we can also better understand through imagery that we can take you know, multiple times over the course of weeks or months. So I think this, the sky is the limit, and pun, no pun intended, or well pun intended. Um, but uh, I think we, uh, we can do a lot with this imagery. I think especially when the time comes to bring more of it or some of it in Earth engine, I think uh, it's gonna be you know, helping us power what uh, Rebecca has been talking, the, the, you know, has been uh, telling is the dashboard of our changing planet. And uh, we hope that, I think with your help, we can make a difference. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, Google is all about scale. And uh, here, I think we, uh, we bring imagery at scale and we give, you know, sort of uh, algorithms and, and techniques and systems that help you, you know, all of you here, make a difference for our planet because your work, your research will have, you know, impact on hopefully millions or billions of people. So uh, thanks for being here, and uh, with this, I'll turn it over to uh, to Alan for the next talk. Thank you.